All right, so this is the second lecture on decision trees. Now, where we left off last time was talking about information gain, which is the splitting criteria for C4.5, um, which tries to choose a split to reduce entropy. But I'd like to point out an issue with information gain, which is it tends to choose splits that have, it, it tends to, to, to try to split too much. It tries to choose splits with a lot of branches, and that can, that can lead to overfitting. So for instance, if, if you happen to have a split that would literally put every single data point in its own leaf, then information gain would be super happy. Like it would be, it, this would be the best possible value for information gain, but it would split way too much and it would just overfit because now you have each data point in its own leaf, which is not what you want. So um, since it encourages too many branches, we might want to find a way to mitigate that and tell it, well, only create a branch if it's actually going to, you know, if it's actually going to really, really benefit the information gain. Otherwise, please don't create that branch. So there's a way to do it to try to reduce um, to try to reduce the amount of branching, and that's called the information gain ratio. So we have the gain, which we want to be large, but we also have another quantity that we're going to balance off it, which we want to be small, which is called the split information. Now the split information looks like this, and what these quantities are. Um, so this is the size of S J right there. That's the amount of data that goes into a branch, and we want that amount to be large in each of the branches. Okay, and in particular, we want this ratio. So this is the, the fraction of points that go into, the, into branch J. We want each of those ratios to be large so that the branches just don't split too much. Okay, and so as you can see, if these ratios are large, then um, the, all the terms in the, in the sum are going to be large, and then the negation makes it all small. And so that will help us make sure that the denominator of that fraction is small. Okay, so that's how it works. We, it just tries to sort of mitigate the information with trying to make sure each branch is fairly populated. Okay, so if, if all else being equal, if you had um, a choice between a split with, you know, a whole bunch of different branches versus a split with only a few branches, it would choose the split with only a few branches. Okay, I want to show you some other replacement splitting criteria, and I just want to talk about the talk about binary splits. So binary splits is when you just have you know just two options: you either go left or you go right. Okay, so for that um, we already talked about the entropy, which it, you know you you want to have these very pure le very pure leaves. So you want to have leaves that are like all positive or all negative. And so for that, you, you'd look at the entropy uh, of, of P, which is the fraction of positives, and then one minus P, which is the fraction of negatives. Okay, so another replacement for entropy is something called the Gini index. Now the, the Gini index, instead of the entropy, you would look at, um, you would calculate two times P times one minus P, which is the same as the variance of the Bernoulli distribution. And I'll talk a little bit about how these things compare with each other in a second. Now the other competitor in the same vein is the misclassification error. And you're probably thinking, why is that the misclassification error? So let me at least explain why that's called misclassification error. So let's say that you're going to classify a bunch of data points according to the majority vote. So if, the, if P, the fraction of positives, if that fraction is less than 0.5, you're going to vote negative. You're going to vote that these are mostly negatives, and otherwise you'll vote mostly positives. Okay? So we're just voting. You have a bunch of data points. Some are positive, some are negative. You're voting according to the majority vote. Okay. So let's let's see how let's take a look at the accuracy of this classification rule. Okay. So let's say we have six positives and four negatives. So what do we predict? We predict positive. Because <laughs> there's six of them, there's more positives than negatives, so we predict positive. And so how many errors did we make? Well, we made four errors, four out of the ten, all right? So the, and the probability to vote positive is 0.6. And then if we compute one minus that max, the misclass what I call the misclassification error, okay, so the max is over 0.6 and 0.4, the larger of the two is 0.6. 
So 1 minus 0.6 is 0.4. So they agree with each other, right? The, the number, the fraction of errors we made is 4 out of 10. That agrees with this misclassification error, which is 0.4. Okay, so so far so good. So let's try another example. So we have 10 observations, 2 positive, 8 negative. We vote yo, no because we have more, um, more negatives than positives. We made two errors because there were two positives. We got them wrong. And our um, probability of error is 0.2. And then again, when I calculate this max, uh, inside the max, there's a 0.2 and a 0.8. The larger of the two is 0.8. So the number of errors we made is 0.2. So again, they agree with each other. So you're good. And I put a third one there just for fun. And so here we made um, three errors out of 10. So probability of error is 0.3, and again, we get 0.3. So now you understand why this is the probability of error. It's a probability of error according to a majority vote rule. Okay, so I want to show you how these things compare with each other. And I just, I wrote a little bit of MATLAB code that I just put um, right there in the, in the, on the bottom of the screen there. And what I'm showing you are these three functions as a, uh, uh, these are functions of p, which is the probability, uh, the fraction of positives, right? So as a function of the fraction of positives, um, I've plotted the entropy, the Gini index, and the misclassification error. And as, you, as you can see, they're actually very, very similar to each other. So in many cases, it doesn't really matter which one you use because they're going to split the data fairly, fairly similarly to each other. But I just wanted to point out that all three of these are valid splitting criteria. Um, so normally, uh, when you're doing this, you would keep splitting kind of all the way to the bottom. You'd, you'd basically overfit the tree, right? You keep splitting until either all of the observations in each leaf have the same class, in which case there's no point splitting because you have pure nodes already. Or you could split until you run out of features. Like if you've split, if you only have eight features and you created, and, and you're down at depth eight, that means you've split on all the features already and there's nothing else to split at. You split on everything. So that's um, that's another way that you might that you you know that you would reach a stopping criteria, and of course that's likely to overfit, which is why you prune it back afterward. Okay, um, and you're probably wondering, well, how do I know which splitting criteria to use? I don't know. <laughs> it's just these are all heuristics, as I mentioned, and so you can try any of them, um, or you can invent your own if you like. It's just a matter of what you what what floats your boat. Okay, so in the next lecture, I'll talk about uh, pruning.